Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you, and thank you, thank you, thank you for, for supporting the program, of course, but also for taking time to write us notes of encouragement. Um, it just really gives us, you know, like a good vitamin C shot. So thank you, thank you so much. If you saw the last program, uh, Pam Stenzel was my guest, and she is again today. In fact, we're taking the whole week to talk about purity, abstinence, and how America is on such a wrong track and kids are experimenting with sex at younger ages all the time. And I believe that God has raised Pam up for such a time as this. She speaks to about 500,000 teenagers every year about this subject. And yesterday I kind of uh, wanted you to meet her, you know, and... Um, just kind of laid the groundwork there. But today we're going to talk more about um, her. The thing that prepared her was her work in a crisis pregnancy center for nine years. And it really acquainted her with the problems that come from sex outside of God's plan. You know, today she's going to explain the diseases and no one can explain them like she does. And uh, they're very, very serious and can go on for a lifetime. Uh, she's going to tell you uh, some of the things that she's been through and how these diseases are, we're finding them younger and younger ages. So you really want to hear what she has to say today. And I'm going to join Stephanie. I, this is the greatest dessert uh, idea, and it's so quick and easy, but it's one of those that's very impressive. It kind of looks like you worked real hard to do it. So those are the ones we like. Before I join her, though, Again, I want to offer you this book. I want somebody make sure your youth pastor gets one, that's for sure. Uh, Sex Has a Price Tag It is a wonderful book. It's laid out so that any, I think young people, a uh, young person would find it interesting, just the way it's laid out. Marvelous information, and it's yours for that gift of $15 to the program. It's so important, and at the same time, you're helping us stay on the air, and I so appreciate that. So you used your credit card on that 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. And if you still write checks like I do, uh, write to Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I'm joined here with a friend who doesn't write checks. Not very often. Yeah. <laughs> what would you write a check for? I, what do I write a check for? I don't know what I write no. a check for. <laughs> I know my my kids. You know, oh, I know my online. my water bill because if I pay online, they charge you like three dollars and seventy five cents, well, and that, I'm not paying not three dollars and seventy five cents if I can write a check. No That's way. the like the one no. check I write. <laughs> and my daughter in law, and maybe you too. I mean, Christmas shopping online. Let's oh yeah, I'm gonna get. I have three quarter cups of chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Hello. And I have a half a cup of evaporated milk I'm going to put in here. We're going to get this melting and that's a little bit two of, tablespoons uh, of brown sugar. sugar. This is good for you. And all of these things you might have if you wanted to at the last minute uh, fix a dessert that would really impress. Now, the brownies... I was at the store. I thought you could buy them or you could pay 99 cents for a box. Right. So I we did. made the box one. Now, I will tell you, I had put them in a bigger pan so we could share with more people. <laughs> but Arlene came in after me and put them in a smaller pan. So for those of us that don't get brownies today, it's, it's Miss Rippy's. So uh -huh. I'm just saying. I was trying to be nice. Well, also for the... Uh, Can I assist it's not you? Coming out. Did you, um, you? Did you spray the pan before you moved it over? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, but uh, don't put the camera on don't her. Don't okay? put the camera on her. Yeah. <laughs> no. Talk. We are a struggling chef over here. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of butter in here because butter makes everything better. And I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And that's just going to make a nice, smooth. Okay. I, oh, I, my. I put it out. It doesn't look too good. But Okay. Um, I also have some cons that are chopped up, but that's for later. Okay. You know, this reminds me of a of a dessert at a restaurant here in mm -hmm. town. And you'll see, when you see what we do with it, um, I think I got to get some ice cream out of here. It's already on the stove. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
So what's the name of the dessert? It's a, well, it's not exactly because it's more of a cookie, but it's a bazooki. Yeah, it comes with a chocolate, I think, a brownie, too, you can get, I uh, think. But, uh, but uh -huh. yeah, my daughter loves the bazookis. You put a little of this sauce on the bottom, and then you can take your fork and just sop it through there. I am going to have to walk away. Walk away, Stephanie. Are you sure you can walk away from this? I'm going to have to walk away. Walk away, walk away, walk away. Because I went to a wedding over the weekend, and I ate just, like the world was coming to an just end. Just one little tiny... She's like, a pusher. She's like it. a pusher. She's like a pusher. Do you hear her? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit here. Mm, I'm going to make it all fancy. Mm -hmm. Do this. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Here, let me get this to where it can be seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, y'all. But this really is what I call an impressive dessert. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that goes there. Might want, yeah, I probably would put a little more sauce on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just trying to be, earth, do Arthlene Rippy. <laughs> and then you put a little oh. more sauce on the top. I'm getting direction from the camera mm -hmm. over here. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Look at right. Hello. Getting it. Oh, did I just move it? I just moved it. I'm so sorry. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to get it so it can be seen. I'm sorry. Mm. I'll stop moving things. I got a hand. I'm to not you. touching if you can, anything. If you stand there and look that, and I'll take a bite. <laughs> Don't move it. Whatever it you do. <laughs> now you can see it. I <laughs> Listen. You know when you hear sounds like from behind the camera that you have done something wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is good. It's awesome. Talk to the people while I choose. I absolutely believe it. And mm. you can have this recipe, although so super simple. I mean, if I gave you all of the directions, mm -hmm. but you can have it emailed to you. That's the easiest way. But as I way. said at the top of the show, it's an impressive dessert. You have. To it's about taking something simple mm -hmm. and just going up a notch. What about a little hot caramel on it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sure. if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. And if you fix it for people, they are going to mm. love you. It's absolutely free. That information is coming up. And after that, uh, I think you're going to really enjoy Pam every day this week. And you, you know, you don't have one guest in a subject for a whole week unless it's really important. And unless that guest is a great communicator. So that's what we're doing this week. So after you see the recipe offer, then you'll see Pam again. I hope you saw her yesterday as well. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, um, glad to continue on with Pam and this very important ministry that she uh, heads up. And I think on the last program, we kind of laid the groundwork of how God prepared you. He thoroughly prepares his vessels. He, he really does. does. If you sit down and think about it. Mm. Um, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Because you cover everything. You cover the emotional. You cover the spiritual. You cover the incredible diseases that can follow you the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, when, when I speak to students, one of the things I hear a lot from teens across the country is that some of them kind of knew that, especially kids who are churched or who have some background, they're like, yeah, we knew we weren't supposed to have sex. We knew that they knew the Bible verses, mm -hmm. but, but they, they didn't have any of the medical information. We just failed for so long to just give that information about what's going on. And I think it, that that whole need to, to tell students came from my work in the pregnancy clinics. I would have girls come into my clinic for a pregnancy test, right? They're scared, waiting for the results of, of the test. And, and for a lot of the girls, I'd walk in and say, hey, your test is negative, right? You're not pregnant. 
and then she would get this look of relief <laughs> over her face like I am off the hook I'm not pregnant thank you so much let me you know I'm going home I said wait a minute have you been tested for syphilis gonorrhea herpes chlamydia trichinoma slavodemia arthritis hepatitis B hepatitis C HPV HIV you've been tested for these and they're like me I live in you know, Tampa, I don't live in <laughs> Miami, you know, why, why would I need to be tested for that? And, and we had an entire group of young people who thought that the worst thing that could happen if they had sex outside of marriage was for them to get pregnant. And, you know, I think because of the way our society treats uh, unplanned pregnancy, because abortion is such a, mm -hmm. you know, a huge thing, that we've made pregnancy the disease, mm -hmm. and we failed to talk about what really is the disease. Pregnancy is not a disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's survivable. You can live through it. Mm -hmm. I've lived through it three times now. A few extra pounds here and there hasn't killed me, <laughs> right? You know, I, I survived. That's not the worst thing. And yet, for a lot of young people, and sadly, for a lot of parents, they think the worst thing that could happen is for for a young girl to get pregnant, and it's just not. There's just uh, we can deal with pregnancy. I can walk a girl through that. Yes, her choices are going to be difficult. Yes, she should have never had sex. That was when she had a good choice to make. Mm -hmm. But but pregnancy, I can deal with. These other things are are so much more you painful. Know, it seems like there's new diseases popping up all the time. Always. Nobody can say them as fast as you do. Yeah, well, I work on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I tell kids, in, in the 1950s and 60s, we had about five sexually transmitted infections at that time we knew about and were treating. You could count them on one hand. Mm -hmm. I tell students every day, go find a grandparent. Find somebody who grew up in the 50s or 60s and ask them, Yeah. you know, do, did you have crazy speakers come to your school with, or church when you were a teenager and talk about syphilis? And they're like, uh, no. Yeah, no. we heard of that one. There were syphilis, only gonorrhea, two or three probably. At the um, yeah, and, and herpes. Herpes was around. But now, today, we have over close to over 30 different sexually transmitted infections. 30% of those are absolutely incurable. And, and that's something people aren't. You get one of these STDs that are incurable and you've got it for life, there's no cure. We, we've never, in the, if it's a virus, we can't cure it. There's two classifications of sexually transmitted infections, bacteria and a virus, or non-viral and a, vi a, a virus. A, a, a non-virus or a bacteria infection is curable. Typically, we can give you medication and take care of that. A virus is not. I mean, Do they try to control the virus? Well, you the can control they keep it. coming up with new medications or something? Yeah, you can control it or, 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 or it can sit dormant. Mm -hmm. But I used to, te I tease kids too, this is probably not good to say in Florida, but I said an example of how a virus isn't curable is the way we're scaring old people with commercials here in Florida. Uh -huh. uh, some of them have seen it. Like if you had the chicken pox as a child, yeah. <laughs> The shingles virus lives inside you. Well, of course it does. It's a virus, right? And and, and they there. operate the same way. And so it's so important that, that you know our kids just some of them don't understand that this could be forever, and uh, and the damage can be terrible. The number one STD in the world is human papillomavirus. It's it is by far. Okay, the let's talk about that. That's the one they're trying to vaccinate kids. Well, yeah. And there's a, here's the reason. First of all, it's a virus, so once you're infected, you're infected. It used to be that we were only concerned about genital warts. That's that's kind of the street name for HPV, mm -hmm. uh, human papillomavirus, because it can create condyloma or warts. But the problem is there's over a hundred strains of this virus, and most of those strains don't produce warts. The biggest damage from a lot of these strains is cervical cancer in women. It's the number one cause lesion of cervical cancer in women. We've got girls as young as 18, 19, and 20 undergoing radical hysterectomies. And they know the cancer comes from this? Yes, it comes from a, a sexually transmitted infection, which is HPV. So, so um, and, and now in males we're seeing some throat cancers and some other penile cancers long term as a result of it. But, but primarily the biggest consequence is cervical cancer in women. So for years we were having, you know, making sure women got pap tests and making sure they were screened. Right. Well then in 2006 Gardasil released, uh, of, or Gardasil was released by Merck, a vaccine. The, originally we only gave it to girls um, because of the, it was cervical cancer we were trying to in theory prevent. Uh, the problem is Gardasil needs to be given to a girl who is a virgin. If she's not a virgin, it most mm -hmm. likely won't do any good, which is why they targeted prepubescent right. girls, 11, 12-year-old girls. And it's on TV all the time. Yeah. But, I watch it. But there's problems. First of all, we don't know how long this vaccine is effective, and, and we're not really sure how it, how it works exclusively. So right now they believe 
that of the hundred strains of HPV, Gardasil is good for about four. So the, the newest ones may be six. So that leaves nine, ov up over 90 of those viruses still there. It is incomplete protection. So it might reduce your risk of developing cervical cancer. It does not eliminate your risk. And I think it's so important that as parents and grandparents and, and, and as our young women that we understand that even if you are vaccinated, we can reduce maybe your chances of getting cervical cancer. We cannot eliminate that chance. The only way to eliminate it is to not have sex, marry someone who's never had sex, both of you completely uninfected, and stay faithful to stay that faithful. uninfected partner for life. I wonder of all the women out there who uh, have been diagnosed with cervical cancer, do they ever tell them where it comes from? Uh, I think today they might know better. Of course they didn't, in the past they may not have explained it completely. Um, I, I would hope in the last decade or so, it's, there's more of an understanding of that. But, but that's true of a lot of these STDs because people don't want anyone to feel bad or you know, that, that sometimes they don't explain it. I, one of my the most painful HPV stories that I have, besides having girls who've undergone hysterectomies young and those painful things, I was speaking for a youth minister's conference mm -hmm. and um, a young wife stopped while well, she was there with her husband who was a youth minister. She came to my talk and afterwards she wanted to talk to me alone and there wasn't gonna be alone in the middle of this conference. Mm -hmm. So I, I invited her to meet me for breakfast before I had to fly out the next morning. And the next morning I met with this young mom. She was just tears and shaking and so upset. First thing she told me was that she was a virgin when she got married. And uh, I, you know that was great. And then she told me that her husband was not. And I stopped her and I said, did he tell you? Did he tell you before you got married that he mm -hmm. wasn't a virgin? She goes, yeah, he told me. So they got married, and two years into the, to the marriage, she became pregnant. And this is typically what happens with HPV, especially in women. The hormones of pregnancy kicked that virus into, like, full-blown mode. She ended up with warts and condyloma on her genital area, they all over. Had to have them burned off at least four times during her pregnancy. They had to do a C-section because we couldn't risk infecting baby. Mm. And she, this young mother was in tears going, I laid on that table having all of this done to me, and she goes, I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And and it was because of him that I'm the one experiencing. He's not experiencing any of this pain. It's all her. And she was, oh, she was angry. And she was considering divorce. And I had to look at her and say, sweetheart, you knew. You maybe didn't know this would be the result, mm -hmm. but you knew. And you said for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, and sickness and in health. And, health. and your little boy needs his father. Divorce isn't going to mm -hmm. fix this. You need your pastor. You need counseling and we need to heal the marriage. And you know, I, I, I never met that youth pastor, never mm -hmm. talked to him directly, but so many times, you know I've thought about that. What could I say to a 17-year-old boy or a 16-year-old boy to say, maybe you won't be the one paying the price, but be it could wife. be your wife, mm -hmm. and your marriage could pay the price. And to think the emotional burden she was carrying, that marriage was hanging by a thread, I guess we don't know how it turned out. Yeah, end, I'm praying she, they got the help they needed because, you know, divorce isn't going to fix it. But but here's the, the physical consequences, and we didn't get into chlamydia. That's a very common STD among our teenagers. Chlamydia is one of the primary causes of infertility in women. Pelvic inflammatory disease scars her tubes. So here are these girls getting these bacterial infections, and they don't even know it. Most of the time they don't know it. Even if they get treated for it, it can still damage their tubes. And at 27 years old, they're wanting to get pregnant now. They maybe made some mistakes mm -hmm. as teenagers, asked for forgiveness, cried their tears. I'm sorry. Well, now I'm 27, married, want to get pregnant, and I can't. Won't happen. And, and it's just devastating. And our girls deserve to know, of the 30 major STDs we're dealing with, full 25 of them primarily damage women. So for our daughters not to, and our granddaughters to not to understand that when he's saying all these words like, oh, I love you, and I'll be, <laughs> he has this much to lose, you're putting it all on the line. Yeah, prove to me. Uh, that She's she the one who's going to bear the price at the end of this. Do you know, um, through the years, and it hasn't been very often at all, I've probably heard a few sermons on purity. Uh, they were not enough for me to really remember anything. But you're the first one that I've ever heard that really describes the consequences in the physical body and the um, diseases which are multiplying, aren't they? There's yeah. new ones coming up all Not the time. Not only are the diseases themselves multiplying, but the number of people infected. So, so this is the deal. Like for parents, and I'm a parent, and, and, and a lot of our parents grew up either in the 80s now 
or maybe earlier than that, but in our day, there just weren't that many infected, right? Um, in the 60s, it would have been about one in 32 of your classmates would have been infected. When I graduated high school in the early 80s, it was about one in 18. Today, it's one in three. Last oh year, we word. had the highest STD infection rate we have ever had in the United States. CDC released the stats six weeks ago. We had 20, well, 23 million. The year before, it was 20 million. 23 million new infections in one year in this country. So, and in, in, in full 57% of those are people between the ages of 15 and 24. So, it's our high school and college students to a great degree that are being impacted by this. Now, I think you said uh, maybe on the last program that you don't really talk to kids under junior Seventh high. Seventh grade, yeah. Because, um, and I agree with you, I feel hopefully the parents, <laughs> speaking of parents, <laughs> it was never mentioned in my house. Uh, so no. my, my Back mother, in the day, it didn't happen very often. I, my uh, mother said, now when you're ready to get married, I'll talk to you, and that was like <laughs> 70 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> But, and, and on probably the next program, we're going to talk about uh, parents really need to step yep. step up to the plate. But I think it's important. Uh, they say, well, don't scare them with this disease stuff. I'd scare, the, that, I'd scare them. That's so ridiculous. When, when it comes to scaring people, students or as a parent or an mm -hmm. whatever, when, if you had a four-year-old that kept getting up at night, you know how you put them to bed and they mm -hmm. won't stay there? Uh -huh. If I went to my four-year-old and said, you know what, there is an alligator that lives under your bed, and when I turn these lights off, if you put your foot down there, he's going to crawl out and chomp your leg off, so you better stay. That's scaring kids. That, that, that's unacceptable. But to tell kids the, the truth, truth. Yeah. about what the end result of their behavior is, mm -hmm. if it's, of course, I mean, th that's not scaring them. That's giving them the truth. And then saying, you know what, you can avoid all of this. It's called don't have sex, marry someone who's not had sex, and stay faithful to that uninfected partner for life. Mm -hmm. That 100% you don't have to worry about any of this. That was the Garden of Eden. That's where it all started. Yeah, <laughs> Again, it's a sin problem, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has been going on since the beginning of time. Well, I think a problem is, too, that... Um, the church is pretty lackadaisical about it. You don't hear much. I mean, you're out there pounding the pavement, but who else? Well, and I think I think some of our church, I, I don't want to, here's the sad thing. We have gotten a little bit away of even talking about sin because we don't want people to feel bad. Mm -hmm. I used to tease. Everything's it, feelings. Yeah, yeah, oh, we want you to, oh, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Don't be uncomfortable. And it's like, you know, I remember a day when we had Amazing Grace in our church. I remember Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that <laughs> saved a wretch like me. <laughs> we don't have Amazing Grace anymore. We have Mediocre Grace, how bland the sound that slightly corrected a misguided person like me. I once <laughs> didn't see very well, got context, got lost, bought a GPS. I mean, we aren't <laughs> confounded by our sin. And until a person is confounded by their sin and the level to which they have rejected God and His, his law and His love, mm -hmm then we'll never come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, the prodigal son needed to experience pig slop mm -hmm. in order to come home. And the problem is we don't let people experience that. Mm -hmm. We try to cover their sin. We try to make it feel good. We try to, to, to call it anything but what it is. And then what we're doing is we're, we're not giving them an opportunity to respond to the gospel. You know, as I've watched your videos and I see those kids there just transfixed and when you're funny, they kind of look around like, am I supposed to laugh? <laughs> am I allowed? <laughs> Can I laugh at this? Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> um, I have a feeling they've never heard anything like that in their life. Yeah, a lot of them haven't, which is sad. I'm, I'm hoping that we continue to do a better job, but sometimes you do f feel like the prophet in the wilderness, like mm -hmm. the only one <laughs> trying to, to speak the truth to, to students. But uh, part of the reason why I, I bring some laughter and humor is to release some tension because mm -hmm. I've had kids faint and, you know, because it gets a little tense, you know what I mean? You kind of have to mm -hmm. let them breathe a little mm -hmm. bit and, and, and kind of follow th so that they're not, like, totally getting scared. Well, we are we're out of time, but uh, you're going to be on, with us on the next program. Yeah. Um, and we kind of end up going in various directions, and we did pray before we started, really be led by the Holy Spirit. But uh, let's talk about parents. I, I don't want to paint with a broad, broad brush, but um, that's your first line of defense. Absolutely. It's not the church, 100%. it's the home. It's the parents. And right. this program's called Home Keepers.
Yeah. And I think that's a powerful word. Yeah. They're not homemakers or any of that. They're, and I see homekeeping as putting a chain link fence around the house, mm -hmm. barbed wire at the top and two Rottweilers at the gate. That's <laughs> homekeeping. Uh, stay with us. She'll be back on the next program. And I have a couple things to say to you before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I was just thinking how I thank God that uh, we were able to have Pam on this week and some of the things she's been saying. You know, it's time for the church to get real plain again when it comes to sin. And that's kind of what we're talking about. And uh, at the top of the program, I offered you this book, Sex Has a Price Tag. And let me tell you, it really has a price tag. It can mess up young people. It can actually put you into poverty because it can so change your life. This is a marvelous book, and I hope you'll take advantage of this offer. So for that gift of $15 to the program, you can use your 800 number or your credit card, but with the 800 number, 229-0059, or the address if you want to write a check, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. I have a feeling that uh, Pam probably educated many of you as she did uh, me talking about those diseases. Some of them I had never ever heard of, but our heart's desire is to keep the young people from them and from the problems that can come up when you do things outside of God's will. According to the Bible, sex is only allowed in the confines of the marriage covenant. That's it. That's it. It doesn't matter what the world says. And to me, what is frightening is the messages the young people get, not from just teenagers or people in their 20s or so forth. I'm talking about people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who see nothing wrong, nothing wrong with cohabiting with anybody you feel like at the moment. It's a bad message. But we've got the right message for you. Be sure and tune in again on the next program when Pam will still be with us. And please remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.